Ready to build your own web server with Node.js and TypeScript? In this video, I will take you step by step through creating a Node.js HTTP server from scratch and show you what's under the hood. Hi, my name is Alex. I am a senior software engineer with years of experience in JavaScript and Node.js. My goal is to help you become a confident and stress-free developer by increasing your skills and proficiency. Let's get started. I am in an empty folder in VS Code. Let's go ahead and initialize Node.js project with npm init-y. This command created a simple package.json file. Let's go ahead and install the following dependencies. We're going to install TypeScript, types for Node.js, tsconfig for Node 20, since it is the current long-term support version of Node.js, and tswatch. As usual, the link to the GitHub repo with the code will be in the description. Let's go ahead and create tsconfig.json file in the root of the project. This file contains TypeScript configuration. We're going to extend tsconfig node 20 and add compiler options where root dir will be the src folder and out dir will be the dist folder. That's it for the tsconfig.json file. We keep it pretty simple. Next, let's open package.json file and update the scripts. We will delete test script and add dev script. The dev script will use tswatch to watch for changes and on success it will run a compiled server.js file in the dist folder. Let's go ahead and create server.ts file in the src folder. Server.ts file imports create server from HTTP module of Node.js and a handler function from handler.ts file. This function will handle incoming HTTP requests. It doesn't exist yet, but we will create it in a minute. We specify the port number 3000 on which the server will listen for incoming requests and assign it to the port variable. Then we create an HTTP server instance passing the handler function as the callback. This function will be called for every incoming request. We assign the server instance to the server variable. Finally, we call listen method on the server instance. The method takes the port, in our case 3000, and the callback function that logs a message to the console, server listening on port 3000. Now, let's go ahead and create handler.ts file in the src folder. But before we do that, if you are learning something new, please click the like button and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Handler.ts defines a basic HTTP request handler function using Node.js's HTTP module. We import incoming message and server response types from the HTTP module. Incoming message represents the incoming HTTP request and server response represents the HTTP response to be sent to the client. Next, we export an asynchronous function named handler, which processes HTTP requests and responses. REC represents the incoming request object, res represents the outgoing response object. res.end hello world ends the HTTP response and sends the string hello world as the response body. This handler function responds with a basic hello world message for every request it receives. That's it. The simple Node.js server is done. Let's send requests to it. We are going to create api-test.http file in the root of the project and define a get request to hello endpoint on localhost 3000. To run the .http files, you need to install the REST client extension for Visual Studio Code. After it is installed, you'll be able to use .http files to send HTTP requests. Let's start the server by running npm run dev. We got a message the server is listening on port 3000. Let's send a request. We got a response back with a hello world. Our basic HTTP Node.js server is working. This is all you need to create an HTTP server in Node.js. However, this server doesn't do much. The core purpose of a server is to handle incoming requests, process them, and send appropriate responses. Next, we will explore the properties of the incoming request object, which we can utilize to handle and respond to requests effectively. Let's open the handler.ts file and add some new code. 
will log the HTTP method from the incoming request using the method property of the request object. Additionally, we'll log the request.url to capture the request URL. Lastly, we can retrieve and log the host header by accessing red.headers.host. Node.js doesn't offer a straightforward API to extract additional details from the request. To address this, we'll create a constant called parsed URL. Using the URL constructor, we will pass the request URL as a first argument and construct the base URL using reg.headers.host, which in our case is localhost 3000. This setup helps parse and work with a URL more effectively. Now we can leverage the parsed URL to extract and log details like the protocol, host name, port, path name, and search parameters. This allows us to analyze each aspect of the URL easily. After making these updates, save the changes and return to the API test.http file and send the request again to test the changes. In the console, you will now see the HTTP method, the URL, hello, and details like the host, protocol, host name, port, and path name. Next, we can add query parameters to the URL, such as keyword equals world. Sending the request again will show the additional search parameters where keyword is the key and world is the value. In the handler function, we didn't explore all the available request properties. For example, head distinct property filters out duplicate headers. The HTTP version provides the HTTP protocol version used in the request, and the socket property offers an object representing the network socket. The socket is particularly helpful when determining if the request was made using HTTPS or for inspecting connection details. Similar to incoming message, the server response object offers various properties to send a response to the client. For instance, we can check if the request method isn't get or if the parsed URL's path name is for a favicon. In such cases, we use the write head method to set response status to 404 and message to not found. Otherwise, we set status to 200. Additionally, if the search parameters do not include a keyword, we can use write method to set the body of the response to hello HTTP. If the keyword search parameter is present, we use write method to set the response body to hello and the value uh, of the keyword parameter. Finally, we can send the response back to the client by using method end. The rest Server response object in Node.js provides additional methods and properties to control the response. For example, send date determines if a date header is automatically added to the response. It defaults to true. Set header adds a header to the response accepting the header name and value. Status code sets the HTTP status code. Status message assigns the status message. Let's go back to API test.http file and send request again. Since we already have keyword equals world parameter in the URL, the server responds back with a hello world. If we remove keyword equals world and send request again, the server will reply with hello HTTP. Finally, if we make a request to get favicon, we are going to get 404 not found. And this is how you can build a Node.js web server from scratch using TypeScript. As you may have noticed, the web server is pretty bare bones and results in a verbose code that is hard to read and maintain. To learn how to use Express Library to simplify request handling, please check out our next video.